Hey guys, Fever Gaming's back, and um, yeah, I don't really have a good excuse as to why I was gone in the first place. I don't know, but I'm here, how about that? <laughs> but in today's top five series, we will look at the best scary spooky horror games available on the PlayStation Vita. And just a fair warning, this list is not for the weak fainted, so uh, <laughs> cautionary right there. But before we dive into the dark side of the Vita, and I don't mean the lack of Sony support, now that's more scarier than anything on this list. I'm doing a giveaway. I'm giving away two $20 PlayStation Network cards, and all you have to do is very simple. Subscribe to Fever Gaming, give this video a like, comment the game you've played or would like to play from this list, and follow me on my social medias, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, where I'll announce the winners, so uh, stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's get to the list. At number five, we have Never Ending Nightmares. The first game on this list is Never Ending Nightmares. Developed by Infinite Tap Games, comes a drawing-inspired horror game with the lead designer struggles with obsessive compulsive disorder and depression where he wanted to create a feeling of bleakness and hopelessness in his own game. In this 2D hand-drawn line art style game, you play as a character known as Thomas, a man who wakes up from one nightmare into another, and the player navigates throughout the game and nightmares become more progressively worse and even worse, adding the horrifying monsters a look in these nightmares. In the story, you meet your little sister known as Gabby, who frequently appears in nightmares and occasionally changes roles throughout the nightmares. You will explore the setting of the late 1800s in various points like a mansion, cemetery, an insane asylum, forest, and a hospital. If Thomas dies in a nightmare or gets seriously caused a depression or commits self-harm, he will wake up in either the same nightmare or a different nightmare which overall acts as the game's checkpoint and save point. Quite an interesting concept when you die something happens in the environment which is influenced by your nightmare adding a dynamic experience which you know if you're looking for some spooky definitely give this game a go. At number 4 we have Resident Evil Revelations 2. One of a handful of console ports comes Resident Evil Revelations 2. And in this installment, it's a third person title that is set between the events of Resident Evil 5 and 6 with Claire Redfield as the main protagonist and Barry Burton's daughter, Mayora, as a supporting role. Claire works for an agency called Terra Save, a non government humanitarian group which manages different situations around the world. During a private function, the group is ambushed and before long, you end up in prison and bad shape. You play the role as Claire, who wakes up on a mysterious island after breaking confinement and regroup with Mayora and together escape, but only to find out that this is just the beginning of the horror story. Afterwards, you take the role of Barry and Natalie to continue the adventure and complete the various amount of episodes included on this game. The gameplay mechanics is that of a Resident Evil game that uses the analog sticks to move around, R to melee, change weapons, and overall shoot down your enemies with a variety of weapons at hand. Utilize the touchscreen to make these changes make the game even more intense with these features. The game overall packs a punch in delivery of a good Resident Evil game on the go. It's decent, it's not the best necessarily, but it is a good kind of alliteration on the PlayStation Vita. At number three, we have The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. The Binding of Isaac is a top-down dungeon crawler that has a presentation in two dimension sprites where players take control of Isaac, the main character. Often this game is compared to The Legend of Zelda, but with you know more of a spooky and scary elements incorporated within the characters and the story. So it's not the same, but it's kind of there. Inspired by the Holy Bible story, it starts with Isaac, a small little lad living with his mom in a small house keeping to themselves. Isaac's mom ends up actually hearing voices from the greater beyond and starts stating that her son is corrupt with sin and that he needs help. This is where the uh, story gets quite interesting. Uh, the mom complies with the voices, taking away everything Isaac owns, including his toys, drawings, and later locks him inside of his room. The twist comes when the voices even actually question her devotion, and which in other words means that she must sacrifice Isaac. So um, yeah, there's that. The main concept is to run away from her and ultimately find a way to escape and live. Throughout the spooky missions and levels, you'll encounter enemies and will defend yourself by shooting tear bullets, bombs, and other ways to maneuver around your enemies with power-ups and upgrades obtainable. Ultimately, the game has 13 possible endings, meaning that depending on how you play the game and what you do can arrange the possibility, meaning that there's a couple of replays you should definitely do to get the full experience on this game. At number two, we have Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Among one of my favorite series in gaming, Danganronpa Trigger Happy of Havoc has a special dark charm that needed to be included on this list. The game takes place in the elite high school called Hopes Academy where only students with accepted talents can join. Makoda is a fairly optimistic student that gets selected via raffle and chosen to enroll in the academy as the ultimate lucky student. And to make the story more interesting, Makoto arrives at the academy and loses conscious and wakes up locked inside the school where he meets 14 other newly picked students. The dark twist? Well, <laughs> if you violate any of the school rules, uh, you die. Also, in order to graduate high school, you must murder someone and not get caught. You know, just like regular school, nothing, no, no big difference, pretty much. 
At first glance, it looks like just an ordinary Care Bear, but you end up finding out it's actually a sadistic remote control bear named Monokuma appears before them, essentially kind of enclosed, and they will be imprisoned in the academy for the rest of their lives, and again, have to kill someone and not get caught to graduate. The gameplay does consist of a lot of story narration development, so I guess you could call it a video game book, but a good one to be added. There's dark humor, class trials to get to the bottom of situations, deep character development, and a first-person perspective when it comes to exploration. And overall, a dark treat for your Vita. <laughs> and at number one, we have a drum roll, please. We have Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor is a post-apocalyptic survival horror game with a retro 2D graphic style where the players play a nameless protagonist that explores the world discovering items, keys, foods, and find other survivors. The main protagonist has a surgical mask, often referred as you, being the player, where he has been living in an apartment for an unknown time after disease has turned most of the world's population into mindless zombie-like monsters. It does feel like the main character is alone, uh, unsure if there's any other survivors, but he does meet a man with a box in his head, which sounds more of a joke than an actually spooky game, but it gets better. There's a man with gunshot wounds, didn't see that one did you? and a girl with a blue dress. Again, in this game you end up exploring the remains of this world from supplies, food, weapons, hopefully you find other survivors and go through apartment complexes infested with monsters and you end up getting a radio where you're contacted by a man referred himself as the director who hooks it up with some supplies, so helping you out. Which you kind of both become kind of best friends at some points. You also encounter uh, the girl of your dreams, so there's a lot of going on in this game. Throughout the progression of the story, you'll definitely find bizarre and paranormal events. The main protagonist, aka the character, also struggles with his own sanity and recalls the people he has encountered exploring different avenues of story elements, which also includes five different endings, so there's a lot to be played in this game, and all of it is influenced by what you do in this game. I really didn't know much about this game after completing it, but after going it the second time, I definitely ended up finding out small little things I forgot the first time or went over my head. And you end up finding out, you know, kind of a different alternative ending that definitely has some value to it when you play it again. And overall, a great spooky game. Well, this concludes the top 5 horror games available on the PlayStation Vita. I do plan on playing more horror games, so I can definitely update you later this year. So this will definitely go up to top 10 horror games when, you know, when Halloween comes around and stuff like that. That'll be a great time to do this list. Make sure to enter the giveaway and put in the description. Follow all my social medias, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and Snapchat as well. And subscribe if you haven't already, which I will hopefully, okay, no promises, because I made so many damn promises now. Um, I'll hope to do at least four to five videos a week no promises just keep just follow me on twitter or facebook and i'll definitely just update you there so you know that's pretty much all i have to say at that point <laughs> i'll definitely catch you guys on the next one though